Hello, everyone. Uh, giving us a test run here. Haven't done a live video in quite some time. So I do want to say good evening. It is currently 744 in the lovely state of Indiana. We're bracing for some, some severe weather here. Yesterday it was snowing. Today it is 70 degrees and about to thunderstorm with tornado possibilities here in just a short period of time. And tomorrow it's supposed to snow again. So we are all up and down here in um, Indiana at this point in time. And what I want to talk about today is my merch store. So we've been doing a lot of promotion around Merch Dojo. Um, and I'm going to post a link in the comments for anybody who's just joining in. This is our affiliate link with it. John and I have been doing a lot of uh, talking around Merch Dojo and kind of our thoughts. And I figured let's stop with all the crappy marketing speak that you've seen through all of the different videos uh, with uh, Chris Green and all of the other people that have been promoting it. And let's get real for a second. Because in all honesty, people, you're not going to make $10,000, $40,000 a month with Merch. just want to set that straight right now. I want to explain what you can really expect. So that's what I'm here to do this evening. I have, if you guys have known me from previous years, I've got a uh, KBS currently. So my Kentucky Bourbon Stout, or Breakfast Stout, sorry, by Founders. It's a lovely day, like I said, in Indiana. The wife's watching Criminal Minds, the creepy-ass clown episode downstairs. So I am uh, not interested in uh, watching that. And hey, Park Shark. Uh, welcome. So what I'm doing instead is I figured I'd share my story. So this is going to be like that show and tell kind of thing. Ask questions. Uh, it's not a hard sell or any sell at all. I just figured I would explain how I got started in merch and kind of where that ended up. Okay. So let's look back at when merch first started. Um, I got an account because I got this uh, phone call from my dad. He said, Chris, I was watching this guy called Chris Green. You know that guy that wrote Retail Arbitrage and Online Arbitrage, the book? And my dad doesn't talk like that, by the way. But regardless, he was explaining the fact that um, this guy was mentioning this print-on-demand system, and it was going to be awesome. You basically could list designs, and when you listed them, they would sell them and ship them for you, which sounds pretty ridiculous in my head. Why in the world would they want me to do this? So he goes, you need to get an account. It's invitation only, and you need to get one now. I'm just doing that to give my dad a little bit of a voice. So um, I went ahead and signed up, and this was at the time um, I was switching jobs and kind of didn't have a lot of extra free time, so I didn't do a lot with it. I remember my first shirt that I uploaded was I tapped that. and had a picture of a cake. I got a stupid little uh, royalty-free clip art image. And I put that on there, and that was my shirt I listed. So I got an account. It was a Tier 10 account. I did not list crap on that account, just going to be honest. I uh, thought, well, this is too good to be true. Why would anybody want to buy my freaking shirt if they could go and buy any other shirt here on Amazon? What makes me different than anybody? So <laughs> I uploaded a few more. Um, it was around the time when the whole Starbucks debacle was happening with like the red cup with the green dot. I uploaded one uh, just wearing that so Spike could wear it as like a Halloween costume or a holiday party costume. Um, really piss poor. Uh, I'm just going to put that out there. I was bad. So over my first four months of selling on Merch by Amazon, I made a full whopping, not even kidding, full $12. It was real bad. So um, what I decided to do was I decided that, Chris, this is dumb. Why would in the world would you waste your time? I'm not a designer. I never claimed to be, never really wanted to be, never really understood uh, the optimization. I knew how to write website content, but didn't really know how to optimize for Amazon or Merch. So I said, fine, just screw it. I don't need to mess with this. So I stopped doing it. That was about January, and me being me, I didn't want my crappy work being online, so I started taking it down. So took that down and went about six months where um, I was kind of hanging out and learning a little bit about other options. I was trying to build websites. I was trying to do like Redbubble or Teespring thinking, okay, everybody's hopping on this merch train. Why don't I look 
for a little bit different avenue here. It's always great to be different. So I tried it, no success. Absolutely pitiful. Um, basically, I determined there was no use of me ever doing this stuff. I should really stick with what I know. So I should teach people how to do things, I should write content, and I should sell items. What I'm pretty good at. Maybe designing and listing shirts that print on demand aren't my cup of tea. So then my dad, uh, I was sitting at a bar here in Newcastle called the Ice House, and my dad sent me a photo one Friday night, and he goes, this merch thing's really working. I'm like, what are you talking about? He sent me a photo of like making a thousand bucks. I'm like, uh-uh, this is bull crap. Because I knew what designs he had up. He had showed me, or showed me, and kind of taught me with some of the designs. So I was like, okay, well, maybe, just maybe, this has some merit. I'm like, first of all, and if my dad was here right now, I'd tell it this to his face. When he first started making designs, they were horrible. I thought, well, if he can make designs and they sell, I should be as sure as, I should sure as hell be able to make designs that sell. So I was like, okay, maybe this has been tested. I wasn't a true believer at first. I thought, okay, too good to be true, whatever. Then my dad started showing me proof of concept. He had gotten through the Christmas months, and he had a few shirts that were selling pretty regularly. So I was like, okay, let's, let's start from scratch here. Let's revisit what I thought was impossible. Let's look at this and go, can it really be making money? Yes. Okay, we have proof of concept. It's like my Mythbusters thing I always talk about here. So the next question is, since it makes money, how do you scale it to a point that actually makes you money? Because we would realize from the first start, I sucked at making designs. If I was ever going to make money, I couldn't be doing that all the time. I'd spend hours making a design, and it wouldn't sell. Why the heck would I do that? So then what I started doing instead was I started figuring out how I could hire a virtual assistant. So I went through a whole process of writing up a entry-level kind of here's how to start interviewing a VA with specific directions. I did some little training videos and got the resources together, and I started trying to find an RA. Not an RA. See, I work in housing and residence life because I say RA for resident assistant. Virtual assistant is what I mean, a VA. So I wrote through all this stuff, and I did my first hiring. I hired six VAs to start, all on trial periods, and I thought, okay, let's give them a whirl. If they're good, great. If they're not, well, we know it's a trial period, no need to worry, I'll just let them go and say thank you, but you're not a good fit. So I went through the trial period, I ended up with three really good VAs that I liked, and I ended up sticking with one. Her name is Sarah. I have been with Sarah now for almost, it'll be two years in May, and she has been one of my absolute best virtual assistants that I've had. So what started happening was I started sending ideas over to Sarah. So these would be ideas that I caught when I was walking through a store, that I came up with, I was watching TV, scrolling through Pinterest, whatever I was coming up with these designs, just seeing something I liked, I'd basically send it over to Sarah and say, Sarah, create me something that is similar to this, but make it so it has no copyright issues, has no issues with uh, being a plagiarized design of any sort, make it your own but take the essence of the idea and take it to it. And that's why I hired her, because she had that ability to take that essence and turn it into something. So we started doing this. I think it was June, maybe it was May, April, May. I gotta look back through my stuff. Uh, but I started doing this and started uploading designs. I started uploading, I'd fill as many as I could. And uh, my pricing schedule was pretty easy. Basically, I listed a shirt at $12.99. When it sold, I bumped it up to $14.99. That was the process, very easy. First shirts I did, I did not optimize at all. They had a freaking title, some words I thought were cool and bullet points, and descriptions, and I'd submit it. So I started doing this. I started loaded, loading these up, and not very quickly, but with some success, I started actually selling some designs. So I got really excited. I was like, okay, great. But it wasn't as much as I was paying the virtual assistant. So me being an entrepreneur and thinker, decided I was going to think about this in a logical way. How can I cover my funds to pay my VA and at the same time be able to upload designs? So thus, T-Shirt Professional was born. What that idea was, was I would create, have my VA work 40 hours a week. Half the designs would get sold and half of them would be kept. 
I'd sell the great ones so people would keep coming back and buy them. And I'd keep the ones that were subpar so that I could put them into uh, my different, uh, on my accounts. So um, I started going and I started working on this. And hold on one second. Yes, babe, what can I do for you? Okay, my wife is crawling around strangely in the room. We'll just let her do that. I don't know what the paper towel's for, but we'll let her go. So when I started, see, Hi. there she is. Um, so what we would do was we Carl, would, the deal of cat says that it's a meowgical deal. Carl's been here? Okay, well, I appreciate that, but thank you. So you can tell this is real and live because she just wanders in. Um, so what was happening was I'd sell half of the designs, and I would basically cover the cost of my VA. So anybody that bought designs from T-Shirt Professional during that time, they were essentially paying for my designs of sorts. But I was giving them the better ones because I thought, okay, well, if I can make money off the crappy ones, then they're sure as heck going to be making money off the good ones. So I sold those, and that's kind of how I built my account up. I would take half the designs and upload them. So I started uploading them, and then um, you started seeing the sales increase. So we got into, like, September, October. I started going from, like, $100 a month to about $500, $600. And then I got to, like, 1000 1500 in November, and then I crossed over 4500 I believe, in December. It was one month of selling shirts online. I was able to make 4500 bucks during one of the best or one of our most expensive times of the year. So um, the shirts were doing it all, and I was out doing another crap. So um, we got through the year, saw sales dip a little bit, but then I had a few holiday-based shirts within uh, March, April, May, and I saw huge sales during that period of time. And all this time, I was funding it because people were buying my designs, and I was pushing that extra designs in. So it was basically uh, low risk. I was doing it, instead of having the time to build the designs myself, I was basically saying, okay, I realize I could have double the designs up right now, but I'd sell them. So what was interesting is about the April time frame, I was reading the people um, from Merch Informer, and I was reading an article about how they sold a Merch by Amazon account. And I had kind of kept this always in the back of my head as if I was able to get a nice year-long string of income in the account, it was over a $1,000 um, a month average, I have the possibility of selling this account. because so it wasn't tied to my Amazon account. Uh, I had a separate account that this was through. So I had the ability to consider that I could do this. So I knew that they worked on what was called a 25 to 28 times multiple. So basically what that meant was they would take your monthly average and multiply it by 24 to kind of kept an eye on my monthly average. And when I got to the month of May, I realized that my monthly average got up to about 100 or 1,600, 1,800 range. And you guys can see, let me pull up, hold on real quick. I will pull it up right now so you guys can see the sold listing. Give me a second because I'm on the computer so I can look. And it gives me a beer break too. Un momento por favore. Be this guy. Monthly profit actually got up to just over twenty four hundred a month. So there's the listing that I have. So in June, I decided I was going to at least entertain the idea that I could list this account, and it was pretty low uh, risk. What I did was I said, "Okay, guys, I'd like to sell this." And I know that everybody's going to go, you can't sell a merch account. Da, 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 da. I got permission to do everything I needed to do from the Amazon merch or merch by Amazon group. I was clear, free and clear. Okay. It's good to go. So what I ended up doing was I, I submitted my like 200 and some bucks, $197 to Empire Flippers and said, hey, take a look. So they did their vetting. They went through all my designs. They went through my income. They made sure everything was great. I answered a crap ton of questions. And then what ended up happening was um, they said, okay, Chris, your site is worth the $66,414. And I said, here's how it happens. We're going to list it. We send it out to our email list. If somebody's interested, they're going to buy. If not, they'll sit there. You have to list with us for six months to give us time to be able to sell this. Good to go. So I listed it. 
And at the time that the day before I was at a golf course or I was at work and I was going to the golf course that evening. So my site went live on a Monday and I played a Monday night golf league. So Monday night comes around. I am out on hole number four of our Memorial Park golf course in my Monday night league. And I get a phone call that says, Hey, Chris, we have two people that are very interested in taking a call with you. Would you be willing to make this phone call? Yeah, sure. Okay, great. So I did a phone call later that evening with two different people, and one of them actually offered the full listing price within 24 hours. They had a wire transfer done. It was secured. We were good to go, and I was able to sell my account for $66,414. Um, crazy. Um, when it was all said and done, I ended up getting just to see, they took their cut of it, which was about eight grand that was out of that. So I got 50 some thousand, then taxes were taken out of that. So they ended up being 45, $48,000 and I was able to go, okay, I sold this account. Granted, I gave up the ability to make money over those two years, but at least I was able to get the guaranteed income right now. And that's a big thing I like. I was able to get the guaranteed portion of it. it wasn't that I was just hoping that it would sell later on, but it was the guaranteed portion. So you probably are sitting there thinking, well, Chris, didn't you have a VA that was helping you do that? That's why T-shirt professional got kind of bumped up at that point in time because I started not meeting the designs because I had sold the account off. So, after that, um, I have since uh, been part of other Merch by Amazon accounts, usually by a partnership agreement, providing designs in and getting a portion of the income out of them. So I have my feet in and hands in a lot of different things that are set up around the Merch by Amazon world. I keep a tab on everything. And I think it's one of the best uh, platforms for print on demand for one simple reason, audience. Now, for anybody that knows me on a personal level, you know I have this love-hate relationship with Amazon. I love the fact that they provide these great services, and I love the income you can produce off of it. But I hate the idea that they own the audience. Just something you play in their sandbox. When you play in their sandbox, they're going to kick sand in your face at some point in time. So over the last few years, merch has shifted and changed a little bit, and it's harder to navigate than when it first started. So... I keep getting asked by people via email or Facebook chat, Chris, should I get into merch? How do I get an account approved? I'm going to tell you this. Getting an account is not that difficult. It may take some time, but it's really you fill out the answers that you know Amazon wants to hear. You put those in there, and you're good to go. They give you an account when they get ready to open it up. And that's, that's fine. But everybody knows I have an account, and I don't know what to do with it. It's a learning curve. And a learning curve takes time. Now, if I would have started when my dad did, um, back when it first started opening up, he still has designs today. I know he can showcase, uh, he's getting ready to write a blog on Merch411.com. is his new blog he's opening up. But he's getting ready to launch a blog post where he shows how he made over $15,000 off of a $5 design by uh, Fiverr. He understands what he's doing but it's taken him three years to get to that point. So what has ended up happening is it's evolved and there's an education lag. What people think are great ideas don't just naturally make great ideas. So I was approached by um, John saying, hey, Chris, Chris Green, you know that guy? And I'm like, oh yeah, the one my dad talked on that weird voice for, because he's getting ready to launch a course. And John knows immediately that I hate promoting courses. Absolutely hate it. I think if you guys want to learn, you should find the free resources, use your time appropriately. But I said, okay, why in the world do you think this? He goes, well, I've, I've, I've done my research on it. I really think it's a good course. I said, okay. So I did a little bit of investigating, and I have started going, well, shit, okay. There's actually some good value to this. So I said, let's go ahead and promote it, but on one condition, because I, like I said, I hate high-priced courses. I said, if we promote this, we have to offer some sort of bonus structure that gives everybody the incentive to go through our link that gives them the tools they can actually use to succeed. So they actually take the course, and they have the tools there. Basically, they got trained. They have the tools. They know how to build the house. 
It's up to them at that point to do it. They can't say, I wish I would have had this or wish I would have had that. So as I spoke with John, we put, some th we put a few things together, and we've created our bonus offer with it. But here's the deal. The reason you should even consider a course like this is not because you think you're going to make $10,000 in the first month. If you think that's the case, there is an email in your inbox right now from a Ni er, Nigerian prince that you can just open up, send over your social security and like your bank account information, and I promise you tomorrow you will have an unexpected surprise. Okay? If you fall for any of that crap, you're disillusioned. Money does not just fall from trees. It takes hard work, dedication, and commitment. Now, you can speed up some of that hard work by figuring out the easier paths that other people have taken, and you can pay for that incentive. So it's all about opportunity costs. I could spend 20 hours learning something, or I could pay somebody six, I could pay for somebody to learn in like four or five hours that I would have to search and hope I found the correct information, which that's all fine and dandy. It's your choice. But I mean, I teach econ classes. I teach marketing classes. I teach, I teach finance classes. Some of you don't know this, um, but I'm actually currently in the process of getting my doctoral degree. My degree is how people learn. I'm in adult community education. So I literally am learning how people understand and learn, especially within the context of adult education. So within the next year and a half, two years, I'll be a full-fledged doctor in the art of teaching. And it's value. Here's the deal. You could sit there and you could go to a college class, say History 150, that teaches you the history of the West World. On average, you'd pay between $900 to $1,200 for that class. You'd sit through the lectures. You'd fall asleep. I try to keep my students awake, but it just doesn't happen sometimes. You'd take quizzes over things you really don't need to know. Then you'd be very excited when you got your A or B and you were done with the class because you were just there to get credit. Now, when you have a self-directed learning idea and style, which is kind of what this class, uh, this Merch Dojo is set up as, what you end up finding is you have an end goal. You have a reason you're doing this course. It's a means to an end for some people. And with that style, you need clear, concise, actionable content that can help you achieve your goal that you have set in your mind, but you need to have realistic expectations within that goal. So I'm setting them right now. I honestly believe if you do merch by Amazon and you do it yourself, you're going to need to wait a year to a year and a half to see great success. And I de uh, determine great success on an average between selling $1,000 to $3,000 a month in t-shirt sales with the occasional underneath or higher than average. I would bet the average would be $1,500 and I would deem that a great success. Okay. I think you take a year to a year and a half to get to that point. If you use some sort of training course like Merch Dojo and you have the tools ready available, I think you can cut that time to four to five months. I think you're going to learn from all those mistakes that I had to learn personally by myself. So that's why we have, that's why we're promoting it. That's why we have the bonuses in place. But I wanted to give you guys my merch story. My merch story was I had an account, I built up the account, I sold the account, now I do other accounts in some capacity. And I still make money. On average right now, I make get about $1,000 to $1,500 a month from merch accounts, which is great side income. And I love it. But you have to understand that you're not going to be at that $10,000 mark, but you have to understand you also may need help getting to that point. So just in case you guys are curious, let me pull up what our offer is. Let me get the, the link one more time. Link is already in the comments. So with this link that posted, you get the following bonuses. If you want to do this course, you're more than welcome to. I think it's got great value. I mean, if you got our email a little bit earlier, my buddy John, who's in the FBA master group, actually decided he was going to purchase the course. So he purchased it. He's as excited as you guys are. He already makes enough money to cover his mortgage each month off of uh, Merch by Amazon. Um, but, um, he's been very interested in there. So he's actually going through it. I have not personally gone through the information in the course. I know the person behind the course. Um, personally, I don't know Brian Burt from Jack shit on the street. Um, nothing bad there. I have no idea who the hell the guy is. 
Um, I'm not sure he's the value bringer to the relationship. I think that Chris Green's the guy you want to learn from. Um, the reason I say that is I understand uh, his knowledge and I've seen the bonus offerings that they have uh, that go along with it of the tier 12,000 person who's selling and the person who's making the income each month that's at the $4,000 level. I think you're going to get more value from those and Chris Green than the rest of the course. And I have nothing against Brian. I don't know who much of who he is. But um, I find that somebody who's been around, like Chris Green, for instance, give a slight backstory here. Um, as my dad talks with him a lot, I know him, not a friend per se, I just know of him. And my dad was mentioning one day how Chris has been a part of the whole process of some of the expansion within merch. You talk about a guy who's entrenched within the culture. He actually has friends that are within merch by Amazon in that whole whole situation. And he was able to tell you when things were coming before they ever were coming. So, I mean, when sweatshirts and hoodies were coming out, you saw pictures of Chris in those hoodies. We knew they were coming, so he has the insider information. And I also know he runs his own account and has that money coming in. So when you have that side of things there, I think any professional that is getting learned there or is teaching has that potential to teach great. But also make this um, guarantee on my end of things. You are going to learn something. If not, ask me the questions, and I'll be happy to provide any of the answers with that. Because I don't find merch by Amazon this mind-boggling like quantum physics equation. There are some really quick and easy ways that you can bypass that learning curve. And to me, it's worth it. But I also think that you could learn all of it yourself. I would never be one to tell you you don't. If you've ever read the FBA Master blog, you know that's how I tell everybody to do everything. But for instance, let me say, you, I have not gone through the course, but say you get my bonus pack. You get 10 custom designs. That's $200 value. I have people that pay for those designs each month, actually $50 a month for two designs. So that could be a little higher. But at a point, I charge like 20 bucks a design for those custom designs. My personal best VA will make those designs for you. You give me a niche, they get created. So you could buy those off my uh, T-shirt professional site, but I'm going to give you 10 for free. Any niche you want. You get a copy of Merch Master. So as I started developing uh, my merch account, I started learning there were specific ways that sold shirts better than others. So I created a spreadsheet that kind of started was a uh, checker. You could put your stuff in and it would give you advice based upon certain factors that I had deemed important for um, merch optimization. So I created an algorithm on the back end. And that's actually built into the Excel spreadsheet that is created there. So you put a you put a optimization in and you go. So that's you get that one. Merch Lister Pro. This is one that I started using at the very end of my time with that first account, and I have used in the other accounts I have managed. And it speeds up if you have bulk uploads um, by filling in bullet points, titles, and that kind of stuff for you. John lives and swears by it. Now, they just bumped up to where it's $99 a year, also $9.95 a month. I've been able to work with the guy and secure for anybody that goes through our link a lifetime membership. So if you use this for four years, five years, you get five dollars $600 worth of uh, value out of this. You get that if you go through our link. All my t-shirt designs. So say um, you decide you really like the idea of outsourcing designs, but you don't want to pay the top dollar for them. You get 15% off all of my designs for life. You get a little promo code, every design you purchase, you just put that code in, you're good to go. Now say you go more on the angle, you wanna create your own designs. John loves to do this. He uses vector packs for this. He's working with his VAs currently to get these vector packs designed, and you get two specialty vector packs, which is worth about $100 when he sells them flat out. You get access to these, which are completely royalty free because they're created specifically for John through his VAs. And you can use them in all your shirts. So if you wanted to take a shirt design and customize it, you could put every single one of the vectors you get into that, create all these different design variations. It's really fascinating. So not only do you get all of this, but you get what's in the course as well. So I just wanted to give you my merch story, give you a little rundown of the bonuses here. Um, you guys don't have to get the course. You can, you cannot, 
But here's the deal. It closes on Thursday. If you want it, you need to get it. It's Tuesday right now. You got probably about 50 hours to make up your mind. And um, I'm going to tell you this. Looking back, I would have made a difference. I wish I would have taken some sort of training to speed up my merch process. Maybe it wasn't this training. Maybe there wasn't something I was looking for on the market at that time. But I would have liked some sort of training to help me go from zero to at least 20 on a, a speedometer of 100. Because that 20 is the hardest part. Because that's where that demotivation is created. That's where I gave up the first time. I said, I don't want to mess with this. I don't see my point. I had this really valuable asset that I ended up selling for $66,000. And I gave up on it because I didn't see the value because I didn't want to learn at that point. So if you have a merch account, you may want to consider this training. It's live until Thursday, so uh, you may want to grab that. If you have any questions, you can shoot me or John an email at chris at fbamaster.com or john, J-O-N-H, at fbamaster.com. We'll be happy to answer them. Our bonuses are only valid until Thursday when the doors close on the merch training course. Um, I'm going to also promise you this. There will be no better bonuses than our bonus selection. If there are, we'll match and beat them. It's plain and simple. We will have the best bonus structure around because – I know the value of this course, and I'm willing to give up part of my commission to make sure that you guys get that value instead of raking in all the dollars that way, okay? It's not about me. This is about me promoting things for you, okay? So I hope you guys have a good rest of the evening. I need to finish my beer. If there are any questions, I'll sit around for a few seconds here, a few minutes. I'll be happy to answer them. This is live Q&A if you want. Questions about how I do merch, um, about the selling process, how I do anything, of course, I can answer what I know about it. Uh, if you want to know more about this beer, I'd be happy to tell you more about that. If you want to know more about anything, I'm here for you. Please let me know. And I'll sit here for two or three minutes, sip on my beer, and answer anything that comes up. So shoot away. Hmm. Not seeing anybody. Uh, what level? What level am I on with my merch account right now? Well, my one is at a 2,000 upload, and I have 560 designs. Now, granted, I've had that account for about three months, so I'm very happy where that's at currently. Now, the ones I help consult with that I provide designs and some uh, moderation to, um, we have some that are up to the 2,000 range as well with about uh, 1,500 designs locked, and it just depends on the other ones. One I have that's just a brand new um, partnership that I'm working with has like 25 designs live, so we're just starting with that side of it. Hope that answers your question there, Mark. What other questions do we have? See if we have any other questions. Da, 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 da. Oh, let me post a, a full blog post that I have over this. If anybody is curious, there you go. Um, other than that, I'll wait for a few more seconds. I got enough beer to sit here. What other merch by Amazon questions do we have? <laughs> so hold on, I'm looking through some stuff right now. No more questions right now, let me hold on. <laughs> That's I shouldn't laugh at that. Any other questions before um, I get out of here? Okay, peace out, guys. Um, I hope you have a good rest of the night. Thanks for spending 35 minutes with me. 
And if there's anything else I can do for you, just let me know. Have a great rest of the evening, guys. Bye.